Today, let's build an open AI application using Svelkit and Vercel edge functions. To do this, I'll be referencing a project I recently built so you can see an example of how you can build your own GPT-3 application. First, let's take a quick look at the application we'll be working with. It recommends shows or movies based on the criteria the user inputs, so you can select whether you want a show or a movie or both. Uh, select some criteria that interests you, and then you can even put as detailed of a description as you want. So for example, we can say it must have at least two seasons and be on Netflix. Now if we click the button, it'll use GPT-3 to generate five recommendations based on our criteria. So now let's open up the code and take a look at how this works. First, I'll briefly go over the HTML, so let's scroll down a bit in this file, and you'll notice we're using Tailwind for styling. Now down here, you've got our header and a title, but if we keep scrolling, we'll get to the more interesting stuff. So here we have the dropdown to select the media type we're looking for. Next, we're looping through the category types, which is just an array of 50 different categories, and we're displaying a checkbox for each one. And then we have our text area for the user to add any specific instructions on what they're looking for. Finally, we've got the Curate My List button, which calls our search function when it's clicked. So really quickly, I want to point out that each field in this form is bound to a reactive value. So for example, the text area is bound to the value specific descriptors, and I'll go over these variables in just a bit. Now moving on, we see we have some loading state, and if we keep scrolling down, we have some error handling. And then finally, we're looping through our recommendations and we're displaying each recommendation in a card once it's returned from OpenAI. So now let's scroll up to the top of this file and we'll take a look at our JavaScript. First, let's go over some of the state we have. We have our category types, which as I mentioned earlier, is just an array of 50 different categories. Then moving on, we have some reactive state. So first in the list is cinema type. This is bound to our dropdown. By default, it's set to TV show, but the user can update it based on what they select in that dropdown. So it could be movie or no preference as well. Next, we have selected categories, and this is bound to our checkboxes. So anytime a category is selected, it'll be added to the array or removed if they deselect it. Then we have our specific descriptors, and this is bound to our text area, as we just kind of mentioned. So if the user types anything in this text area, this value will be updated. Next, we have our search response, which will be the recommendations returned from the OpenAI API. And we've also got some loading and error state, and then finally recommendations, which is an array that will eventually contain all five of our recommendations returned from OpenAI. And this array will actually be created later on using our search response string, and we'll go over that in a bit. Now, let's move on to our search function. Remember, this is called when the user clicks the curate list button. The first thing we see is if loading is true, we return. This is so the user can't spam the button with multiple requests when there's already one in progress. Next, we reset recommendations, search response, and end stream to clear out any prior requests the user may have made. And we set loading to true. In this project, we're specifically using GPT-3 from OpenAI, which functions really similarly to ChatGPT, if you're familiar with that. So we have to provide it with a prompt. So here we are setting the prompt just based on the fields that the user provided. So we're basically saying like, hey, give us five recommendations of this cinema type, so movie, TV show, or either, that fit these categories, and it's whatever categories they selected, uh, with this specific description if they provide one. And I even go on to describe how I want this data to be returned to me or how I want the response to look. So when we get the response, it'll be a string with each recommendation in a numbered list with a title and description. And eventually we will transform this data into our recommendations array, which we'll go over in a little bit. Okay, so now is when we finally make the request. You can see we're calling our get recommendations endpoint with the prompt, and we'll open this endpoint file in a bit and take a look. But first, let's move down here where we get our response. If for some reason the request fails, we handle the error. Otherwise, we're setting our search response to the response returned. Now, clearly there's a bit more going on here than just setting search response to the return response. If we look back at our application, you'll notice we're instantly showing the response as it's generated rather than waiting for all five recommendations to create it and sent back to us. This creates a much better user experience because you can actually see what's being generated as it's being generated, and you don't have to wait the few seconds it takes for OpenAI to create the entire response and send it back to us before we can display something on the screen. 
Now, this happens because rather than using a normal serverless function, we're actually streaming data from the API using Vercel edge functions. To turn a serverless function into an edge function is extremely simple. In our svelte.config.js file, we need to ensure we're using adapter Vercel rather than the default adapter auto. To do this, we simply can install adapter Vercel and then update this file to use it. Next, we just set edge to true like we did here. And now our serverless functions will automatically become edge functions when deployed to Vercel. So now let's open up our endpoint and take a look at this edge function. We're going to ignore what's going on up here for just a second and scroll down where we're exporting our post handler. Now down here, it's just a standard Svelkit endpoint. As you can see, we're getting our prompt from our request param. Next, we're constructing our payload where we tell OpenAI to use this model, which is GPT-3. We're sending our search prompt in as the prompt. And finally, what's important and notable about this payload is we're setting stream to true. Next, we're creating the stream using a helper function OpenAI stream, which is defined above. Now, this function opens up a stream with OpenAI, so OpenAI can send us back chunks of text as they come in instead of waiting for the entire request to finish. So basically, for every word that GPT generates, it is instantly streamed to the client where we can display it to the user. So that is our generate API function. Let's go back to our front end so I can show you how we use this response data. So back in our search function, this is where we're getting the response from our stream. And as I already mentioned, this response will be chunk values, which will typically be a word, maybe two. So here we are taking that chunk value and adding it to our search response state. So search response is our single source of truth. Every word that is returned from OpenAI is added to the string. And then using the string, we work some spelt magic before actually displaying the recommendations on the screen. So let's scroll back up and check out how we use search response. Here we see this dollar sign followed by a colon, which is special svelte syntax that creates a reactive statement. So all the code in this block will rerun any time a reference value changes. And since we're referencing search response, every time a new chunk is streamed in from OpenAI and search response is updated, this entire block of code will rerun. Now, OpenAI returns a list of recommended shows with an empty line between each. So we are splitting the string wherever there's an empty line so that we can create an array where each item is a single recommendation. And then we are mapping this array to create our recommendations array that we are eventually looping through down in our HTML. Now, there are two different data types that we're going to have in this array. One is a complete recommendation that has a title and a description. And the other is an incomplete recommendation that is still being streamed in from OpenAI. So here we're checking if we have at least one full recommendation or if the stream has ended, in which case we have all five recommendations. And we are returning these recommendations in the form of objects that each have a title and description. If it's an incomplete recommendation, um, it means that this is still being streamed in and we're simply returning the incoming string as the item in the array. Now, if you remember, down in our HTML, we are looping through our recommendations array and displaying each in a card. Um, if it is a complete recommendation, we have the title and description, and we display that. Otherwise, we show the incoming stream of the incomplete response. So looking back at the app, this is what allows us to watch as a new response is being generated, and then it reformats to have a title and description like we see here. All right, so that is how you can use OpenAI and Vercel Edge functions in a Svelkit application. I hope I did a good job demonstrating the different streaming data from an Edge function makes. Uh, it creates a much better user experience because you don't have to wait that extra few seconds for the entire response to be created. This is an open source project, so if you want to check out the code, I will link the GitHub repo below. You can also start from our Vercel template. You can instantly clone and deploy this project with a click of a button, so I'll link that down below as well. And I hope you enjoyed this video.